Hold on to your popcorn tight. If not, Logan Johnson will snatch it. One of the country's top defensive players for St. Mary's. The team from the city of Roses, led by Moses. Moses Wood, team's leading scorer. St. Mary's in Portland next. A postcard-like picturesque day in Portland. Inside the Child Center. Big West Coast Conference matchup coming up. The number 15th ranked St. Mary's Gales up against the Portland Pilots. A glance at the West Coast Conference standing. St. Mary's one game up on Gonzaga looking for their first regular season title since 2016. Meanwhile, Portland looking to finish inside the top six. Alongside Mike O'Donnell, Chris Lewis here with you. All right, you just saw it, St. Mary's coming off of that one conference loss, so a chance for them to bounce back here today. St. Mary's is that kind of team. The worst time to play them is after a loss. When the Gales come after a loss, their defense tightens up even that much more. Going to be a tough time for Portland. Well, St. Mary's has had a standout freshman all season long, Aiden Mahaney, as we dive into our AT&T 5G fast analysis. What makes them special? When's the last time you've seen a freshman have this kind of patience and poise in the half court? He single-handedly dismantled Gonzaga, coming off a game in Loyola Marymount and what she said, step back threes, mid-range is averaging 17 a game. Simply put, Aiden Mahaney is one of the top freshmen in the country. Well, on the Portland side this is a team that can score a lot of points especially when they're healthy and they're led by Tyler Robertson who really does it all for the pilots I'm not sure there's a player in college basketball quite like Tyler Robertson he will play point guard on the offensive end and then guard the center on the defensive end you'll see him in the mid post he is a fantastic passer in the half court as well the best passer in the West Coast Conference Tyler Robinson is the real deal it's a real deal matchup we have here in Portland St. Mary's the 15th ranked Gales looking to bounce back Portland wants to protect home court action next College basketball on CBS Sports Network is... College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. By Flonase Allergy Relief. Spraying Flonase daily stops your body from overreacting to allergens all season long. And by AT&T 5G. 
fast, reliable, secure. Last week, Randy Bennett, the coach for St. Mary's, earned his 500th career win against San Francisco. Seventh active coach to win 500 in one program. He's a four-time West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. He's somewhere in there. You can find him if you burrow your way in there. <laughs> Randy Bennett, one of the legendary coaches in the sport. There he is. We found him. Take a look at the starting lineups. For St. Mary's, Mitchell Saxon, the big, is the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Week. On the Portland side, look out for Juan Sebastian Gorosito. A lot of attention on the freshman for St. Mary's, Aiden Mahaney, but Gorosito can shoot it at 42% from three. Portland's head coach in his second year, Shante Leggins. He was the head coach at Eastern Washington for four years before his stop here at Portland. He led Eastern Washington to the NCAA tournament in 2021. And that's a better look at Randy Bennett. Give him some dap to the members of the scorer's table. The 26 most wins among active coaches. Child Center in Portland with Bill Vinovich. Deldre Carr, Toby Doolittle, the three officials underway with St. Mary's first possession. Second meeting of the season between these teams. St. Mary's won the first back on January 7th. Wasn't close. 85-43 the final there. Gales dominated from the opening tip. Mahaney, first touch three, in and out, and almost dropped again, but the Gales get second life. Portland is undersized. They're going to switch ball screens, dribble handoffs, cross screens. So St. Mary's is going to try to go inside early and often. Logan Johnson carves his way inside, but can't finish. Gorosito, freshman from Argentina, the team's best shooter at 42% from three. To the corner, first look from Moses Wood, who did not play the first time these teams met. Well, that's a good look for Portland. They want to get the ball moving. The more assists they have, the more wins they will have. That's their key on offense. Well, the Gales saw their 12-game winning streak come to a close last time out in their overtime loss to Loyola Marymount. He's having a good season under Stan Johnson. Dehaney, freshman, late shot clock. Playmaker to Johnson, penetrates inside, and it's an offensive foul. So the first on Johnson with the screen, or the uh, charge taken by Tyler Robertson. Robertson timed that up exceptionally well. You see him bump off and step right above the restricted circle just in time to get that charge call. You gotta have a lot of grit and great timing to take charges in modern college basketball. So here's Portland, and when they're healthy, they can put up points. They scored more than 80, 13 times this season. Maduka gets rid of it. Robertson lines it up. Off on the three, Johnson the board. They're waiting for Robertson to be more consistent on the three-point line. You mentioned how good Portland's offense can be, and when it's really humming is when he's making threes. That they need the threes. See Portland's doubling initially, then they'll sprint back. They're going to fake double. There's three players around that post defense. Well, it gives room for Logan Johnson to finally get the game's first basket more than two minutes in. You said it, Chris. You're, you're susceptible for those drives on the weak side if you're going to constantly double or triple team the post. Logan Johnson erupted. He had 31 points in the loss of Loyola Marymount. Sholin gets loose and knocks it down. So Christian Sholin gets on the board. They really feel that Sholin is the X factor. Is when he's making shots, it takes so much pressure off of Moses Wood and Tyler Robertson on the offensive side of the ball. Well, we talked about that blowout loss for Portland at St. Mary's earlier this season. The starters in that game were 0 for 16 from three. So they already got one on the board. Less than three minutes in. Hard to win a lot of games when you're part of your offense. A majority of your offense is shooting threes. Lucas, reverse. No. Bowen tries on the board, gets bumped off. But it stays here. It is a foul on Chica Naduka. 
Here's another look from Portland. Coming off that DHO, you'll see, that's an acronym for dribble handoffs. You'll see a lot of DHO action for Portland in their offense. That's yes, about that last foul on Gorosito, so that's his first. Dukas left open, buries it. Alex Dukas up at 42% from three. He's fourth in the West Coast Conference and made threes. And he's shooting it over 41% as well. Virtually automatic in conference play. Rosito off the high ball screen. Listed weight, just 150 pounds. Well, the smallest out you'll see. The Duca to the ground, a wrestling match. And a whistle and a held ball. The arrow keeps it with Portland. I think if you ask Portland head coach Shantae Leggins about Gorsito, he goes, he may, he only weigh 150 pounds, but he might have the biggest heart on our team. Not just heart, but he's a fiery guy as well, Gorsito, which makes a fun dynamic relationship with his coach. Shantae Leggins, a fiery guy himself. They'll go at it during the games. It's good nature. If Gorsito makes a three, you might see him stare down coach Leggins so he avoids staring down the opposing <laughs> coaches and say players on the team. Hey, if you're going to stare down somebody, stare down me so you avoid exactly. technical fouls. He got one in one of his first games this season after hitting a three, blew a kiss to the opposing bench against Portland State in a rivalry matchup. St. Mary's is going to take their time on offense. They're one of the slowest tempos in college basketball. They're going to run a lot of sets. They are unbelievably patient, always looking to go inside. Draws a triple team on that post-entry pass. Double there, bounces out. Johnson fires a three. Front of the rim. Good box out by Solid for Portland. Those shots will be there, though. I think St. Mary's does a great job of passing out of the post. What a healthy three. That would have got the crowd engaged early. So as a defense, how do you prepare for an offense like St. Mary's that will go deep into the shot clock over and over? No reason to take chances. You have to fully commit to the scatter report and be as physical in the low post as you can without foul. Mahaney lets loose and connects. Aiden Mahaney, first three of the game. Aiden Mahaney is the 14th most efficient catch-and-shoot shooter in the country for Synergy Sports. He is so good in that position. A bump and a foul on those on St. Mary's. Keeps it with Portland when we return.
St. Mary's early 8-3 lead at the Childs Center in Portland. St. Mary's the 15th ranked team in the country. Mike O'Donnell, let's get to your keys. And for St. Mary's, no threes, please. Portland's offense is good when they're making threes and paint attack. You have the size and physicality advantage for Portland. Run. Don't let the stifling St. Mary's defense set up. And Swiss family Robertson. Tyler Robinson was playing hurt in their last matchup. Let the offense flow through him. That's when they're really clicking. Robertson. A big body guard. He's listed as really a wing guard forward, but he handles the ball quite a bit. As you mentioned, he's the answer. He's the playmaker. He leads the West Coast Conference in assists per game. Just a dynamic playmaker. He's not going to beat you with speed or athleticism, but his timing and pace are off the charts. Well, Celia Vucinic into the game for Portland, as well as Mike Meadows. A couple of reserves, the first subs for Coach Shante Leggins. And the only field goal so far, a Christian Scholin three. Pilots, they've alternated wins and losses over their last four. This is their fifth game this season against the ranked opponent. First, they're in the uh, Phil Knight Invitational, or they faced North Carolina, Michigan State. Already faced Gonzaga a couple of times. Looking for their first ranked win since 2014. Robertson fires a three off to the right. Snatch of a rebound for the Pilots. Vucinic keeps possession. Those are absolutely golden for Portland. Anytime you're playing against the Saint, this St. Mary's defense, top five scoring defense in the country, extra possessions are a premium. Whistle underneath. And a foul before the shot on Mitchell Saxer. His first. St. Mary's defense is just absolutely lethal. They're fifth in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency per Ken Palm. They're the second lowest assist per, a percentage of assists on made field goals in the country. Less than 35% of the time are you getting an assist. Well, Vujic finds a way to carve out some space of his own, which ends a three-minute scoring drought for Portland. So you mentioned St. Mary's already on this end. They'll take their time. On the other end, they'll smother you. Seems like a tough team to face on both ends. Johnson too strong. Rebound right back to him like a yo-yo. They're clearly giving him a wide open look. I think they'd rather live with Logan Johnson shooting threes than deal in the post. Bowen does rattle it down. Kyle Bowen. He shoots it at 43% from three at nine in the team's first meeting. Bowen shoots almost exactly like Matt Bonner, the late or the, the uh, Florida Gator great. Let's go of his offhand really early. Gorosito defended by Mahaney, freshman on freshman. Hanoi, pretty. They like Gorosito's speed. He's their one true point guard on this Portland team. Really felt like he wanted that one-on-one -on -one battle. He was scoreless in 20 minutes. Back in the January meeting. Johnson hammered, and he'll head to the line. Vucinic, guilty for his first. This is Kyle Bowen, over 42% from a three-point line. Watch his offhand. You see how he lets his offhand go so early? That's not normal, but he can knock it down. And Gorosito taking advantage. You can kind of feel like he wanted that matchup against Mahaney. He is lightning quick. That is a fun matchup when they are head-to-head. -head. You have Gorosito, a fiery freshman at 6-1 against Mahaney, who's the nine-time West Coast Conference Freshman of the Week. Oh, wait, the standard for freshmen in the West Coast Conference this year. That's a fun one. The only other player with more Freshman of the Week honors in the history of the West Coast Conference is Gonzaga legend Jalen Suggs. What a good company to be in. Wood, hook shot goes. That's a tough shot for Moses Wood. There was a lot of movement on the perimeter for Portland, which gave Moses Wood some open area to operate in that low post. Again, that post seeing double teams, triple teams. This could lead to some St. Mary's looks. Good rotations, though, for the pilots. Johnson attacks, spins. 
Draws help. Bowen. Off the front rim and a great rebound by Bucinich. Portland looking to pull within one possession. Gorosino! Oh, yeah! Four straight makes for the Pilots within one. Saxon, 6'10", junior, starts the rotation. Dukas lined up in the corner. He's short on a three. Another offensive rebound for Johnson. Logan Johnson just does not want to shoot the three. They are giving it to him every single time. Dukas, healthy three, bricks it. Saxon gets the O board. Third chance for St. Mary's. There's the three from Johnson. He liked that one. 27% from three, but that's what Portland is going to live with. That's what we're going to try to do throughout the course of the game. They want to stop everybody on the three-point line except Logan Johnson. They'll let him shoot as many of those as he wants. Two-time West Coast Conference. Second team member. A bump on the post. And a little bit too much body from Mitchell Saxon. And that's down number two. Gorosito is fired up. Catch, rip a three. He likes it, then Logan Johnson says, stop talking, Mike O'Donnell. I can shoot the three. Watch this. St. Mary's up four. Thursday night, 9 Eastern, there is more West Coast Conference play on the way. Santa Clara and BYU go head to head, followed by the 16th ranked Zags visiting Loyola Marymount and a fun rematch. Watch it all unfold here on CBS Sports Network. Mention that being a rematch because you can see Gonzaga's tournament profile and what we call bad losses. Their game at home, they lost to Loyola Marymount earlier this season. I can't believe we're calling Loyola Marymount as a bad loss, but analytically, yes, that loss at home against Gonzaga counts as a, a bad loss. They have those wins over Xavier and one of the best non-conference wins of the season. That win versus Alabama is going to be huge for the resume of the Bulldogs. And what a game it was when St. Mary's and Gonzaga went head-to-head -head last week. I think everybody in the college basketball community was watching that game. Social media was on fire. And speaking of on fire, Corosito rips another three for the Pilots. I didn't see whether he stared down the St. Mary's bench, his own bench, or what, but he's starting to get into that rhythm as Portland's within one. Harry Wessels into the game for St. Mary's in the post, gets it there, reach from behind on Meadows. And they get Meadows on the foul. St. Mary's does such a good job of being patient and post entry passes, which is a lost art in college basketball, maybe just in basketball in general, the post entry pass, but the Gales do a terrific job of finding the right angle to pass it in the post. 
Augustus Marcellonis also in at the guard spot. The sophomore out of Lithuania. Bounces to the block. Beautiful hook shot off the back of the rim from Wessels. Here comes Portland. That was a gift because Robertson was late on the help. Boracito already eight points. Tyler Robertson, big body guard. Spins. He tries to hook. And Portland in front. Robertson will give you a three. He'll give you a no-look dime. And he'll give you a Kareem hook shot. That's how unique of a player Tyler Robertson is. Weird to say, Kareem now second on the all-time NBA score. Right. List. I know. Incredible. Portland has made their last six shots. Wessels, there's that double. Late shot clock. Nice drive. Marcelonis both the way. Just three to shoot. Here's Tukas. Steps into a rainbow three. Pure as can be. Is that not St. Mary's basketball right there? You take the shot clock down. You try to get something at the rim. Big shot towards the end of the shot clock. Acceleration. Everything but the layup from Meadows. Shots in transition. Both teams blow the floor with shooting options. Johnson takes it. He's short. And Moses Wood secures. Flying Robertson gets it on the glass. The Portland sideline wants that to be a goaltend. Regardless, Robertson will head to the line. Bowen commits the foul. That is his second. Robertson saw that lane in transition on the left side of the floor and increased his speed in order to get that pass. It's really close, Chris. Yeah, Robertson did what he could to get it on the glass quickly. Mentioned the defensive prowess of Logan Johnson. It's on the Henson watch list for the Tyler top mid-major player. There's Tyler Robertson putting together a great campaign of his own. He's one of two in the country. Averaging 15 points, five and a half assists, and over five boards. Joining Jalen Pickett of Penn State. This is where he's really good, and I'm not just talking about percentage. I mean, he shoots 76% from the free throw line, but he's 22nd in the nation in free throw attempts. There's one spot next to Zach Eady of Purdue. He's taken over 160 free throws. Drawing fouls is, I mean, you know this, Chris. I mean, you're, you're a YMCA legend. I mean, drawing fouls and pickup, like, it's a huge skill set, right? It's not a pickup. You just got to take it out. You don't get free throws. Those games in the YMCA are tough. Man. 24 free throw attempts per game for Portland. A big weapon to their offense. Barcelonis draws the contact on the floor. Bill Vinovich blowing the whistle. By the way, Bill Vinovich, former NFL referee. In fact, he was the referee Super Bowl 49. The last time the Super Bowl was in Arizona. But for tomorrow. That's a great national sports nugget by you. Well done. Man. That was the uh, Russell Wilson interception right at the end against the Patriots. Tough look. Corner three short. Bowen gets it back. Bullies his way inside. And blocked from behind. There's Robertson. And Portland transition play. The St. Mary's does a great job getting back. Robertson long three, front of the rim. Johnson, Euros, floats, and glides it home. Nine for Johnson. Had them going east to west while he's going north to south. That step through Euro, so tough. Jolin, step back from the elbow. Benson, these teams could score with the best of them. Portland averages 77 per game right there, step for step in the early going. Portland is keeping St. Mary's on their toes by making them constantly move. There's passing, there's cutting, there's fluidity to their offense. That's a completely different look from the first time these teams met. Now, Portland was much more banged up in early January than they are entering this matchup. including Robertson, who was banged up. He played. He's stronger now. And a foul. 
Coach Leggins is fired up. This is what Tyler Robertson does. A little behind the back pass. Watch the quick look. Ball screen, downhill. Create the contact, absorb the contact. Portland, they're up one. Welcome back to Portland. It's three-point shooting for St. Mary's. They've taken 14 of them already, but they've hit five. And in the half court, you'll see most of the threes come from inside and out. When St. Mary's offense, when they're making threes, their offense is clicking and very difficult to stop. Even though if they play at a very slow tempo, one of the slowest tempos in the nation, when they're hitting threes, they are very, very difficult to slow down. That's part of the reason they built up that 10 and 1 conference record. And that one came in their last game against Loyola Marymount in overtime. So, Mike, here's their tournament resume. What do you see? I think most, if, uh, most media pundits will have them at a 4 5, maybe 6 seed at the worst. I mean, you look at their bad losses that Colorado State against a team that's really struggling. And Washington is technically a bad loss. They have those wins over Gonzaga, San Diego State. They're two and one in quad one uh, opportunities that Gonzaga and San Diego State win that we just, uh, we just showed you. The one loss was to Houston, who's a top three team in the country. You want to talk about a defensive battle. That yeah. game was 53-48. <laughs> They're six and two in quad two games. Lost at home to New Mexico and Loyola Marymount by four points. Fun to see him in the tournament a season ago handling Indiana before a loss to a really good UCLA team. I mentioned St. Mary's coming in off of a loss, their first and only so far of West Coast Conference play. And down two to Portland. The Pilots have come to play at home. Look how much space they're giving Logan Johnson. They're daring him to shoot that three. Everybody else, they're up in, feet above the three-point line, but Logan Johnson has a lot of space. Dukas creating his own space amongst three defenders. No, but another offensive rebound for St. Mary's. It's been an early feed. Looked like it might have been a double dribble. No call instead of floater from Wessels. St. Mary's, we talk about their defense, but on offense, they never give up offensive rebounds, deflections, 50-50 balls. They always give themselves extra possessions. Robertson, way off, and an attempted save on the baseline, but hits the backboard. And this will be Harry Wessels. Gets the pass, seven foot one freshman. Joshua Jefferson in for St. Mary's, the freshman wing from Las Vegas. Going up high, Wessels on the way down, can't deliver. Meadows picks up his dribble in no man's land. Wood around the screen. Robertson on the run. Great There's help by Johnson. Wow. It's a great defensive player. Picks up the top assignment. Paducah with six to shoot. 
Solid movement three. Book it. What? Coming off a bounce like that? Right wing three? <laughs> Sterling, a couple of years at Portland now after one at UTEP, two at Georgia Tech, so his third stop. And Logan Johnson doesn't stop much. He's already in double figures with 11. I love that play by Logan Johnson as he knew he was driving before he even caught the ball. He saw the wide open lane. Meadows long two. Too much. Paducah tips the rebound. Bowen vacuums it in for St. Mary's. That Dukas. Johnson skies. Offensive foul. It's the second offensive foul that Tyler Robertson has taken in this game. His IQ on both ends of the floor is so good. Does he step up, get above the restricted circle? Yes, he does. So that's the second on Johnson, joining Saxon with two, Bowen with two. Seventeen fouls for St. Mary's, so one and one going forward. Zach Perry, one of the many Australian players in this matchup between these two teams. Moses Wood pull up Jay is perfect. You never get any clean looks against the St. Mary's defense. You have to be ready to make contested jumpers like that one from Moses Wood. He's found a home after stops at Tulane and UNLV. Saxon back to the basket. His hook, no. Vucinic, the board. Ferrocito, fiery guard, but no look. Bounce pass in the lane. Vucinic on the receiving end. And Portland, their largest lead at five. That was a filthy pass from Corsito. The no look coming off the ball screen. D3, Mahaney, no. Oh board once again, Jefferson out. Dukas delivers. That's Alex Dukas. That's one of the best three-point shooters in the West Coast Conference, over 40% from three. Six three of the game for St. Mary's. Jolin, another one. Running the rim. Rebound, it's a battle way outside the baskets. A foul looks like on St. Mary's. We'll stay on this end. Check out this dime. Number four, Corsito. The no look, the beauty. And then Dukas. You can't leave that kid wide open. He's going to bury it. We got a good one here in Portland. Stay with us.
A great one at the Child Center in Portland. Highlands leading the 15th ranked Gales by a couple. Coming up, AT&T 5G at the half. Brent Stover, Chris Walker, John Rosty, Seth Davis. To caught up on all the scores and highlights, all the latest news in college basketball today. It's coming up on AT&T 5G at the half. Christian Scholin for Portland has provided that spacing from the big position. And they've run some really good action for him. So much attention goes to Moses Wood and Tyler Robinson that they've been waiting for Sholin to find some consistency on the offensive end. He's starting to come off more screens, DHOs, getting himself free. And you need guys like that to take pressure off your offense. They've been waiting for that third score to emerge. And today, it's been Christian Scholin. We've talked about Portland, when they're right, when they're healthy, everybody's available, they can score. How much is it because the fact that Wood and Sholin, who are a couple of their forwards, have more than the ability to space it from behind the arc? Well, I, I think it's a huge deal, but everything always starts with Tyler Robertson and his ability to manipulate the defense with his passing ability. And when he's in ISO or he's in post-up, he's not just looking to score, he's looking to make the right play. And there's so many three-point shooters and movement on the weak side, it makes it very difficult to scout. Joshua Jefferson committed a foul before the break. And Moses Wood, front end of the one and one. Two years at UNLV, one at Tulane. He did not play in the first meeting between the teams. He missed the first three games in West Coast Conference play with a foot injury that he's been battling through. Lucas lined up against Perry. Saxon spins. Nice cut off by Wood. Johnson. Chiseling space. Steps through move and draws the foul. A lot of dribbling from Johnson. First foul on Wood. Got away with a double dribble, I think, as his initial dribble through the lane. But watch the patience in the post up. The feet, the angles, the ball fake. Use your ball fakes, kids. Logan Johnson, younger brother of Tyler Johnson, who played in the NBA, a lot of time with the Miami Heat, playing for Eric Spolstra, who was a former Portland pilot. Spolstra, one of the many Portland alums on what they're calling their alumni weekend. Of course, Eric Spolstra not in town. He's a little busy this time of year. Logan Johnson, true on the free throws. Kyle Bowen re-enters with two fouls. And Johnson with two, Bowen with two, Saxon with two, four St. Mary's. Portland has lost 11 straight against the Gales. Both away from Sholin, scooped up. Jefferson reaches and throws it down. Vintage St. Mary's basketball, getting deflections and steals, and any type of cross screen, ball screen action, they blow up all kinds of action on the defensive end. Tipped underneath, that St. Mary's defense swarms, can't secure it, Sholin goes up high and down hard. I don't know how Josh Jefferson, number five for St. Mary's, didn't come up with that off the 50-50 ball. Johnson tries to sneak through, and that's a foul. It's on Robertson, number two, on Portland's number two. They try to go inside to the lob, and then we've got a loose ball. Watch Jefferson. Does it? That's exactly what you want to do. Get on the floor, first to the floor. Just can't come up with it. Jolin in double figures. He is 10, comes in averaging 12. Johnson learned how to shoot left-handed from Tyler Johnson, his older brother. Logan Johnson broke the 1,000 career scoring mark in the game versus Gonzaga. He's got unbelievable quickness. His IQ is just off the charts. He's always a play ahead. Special point guard to watch. If you're, you're a point guard in high school, 
Watch how he plays defense. Watch how he sets up his man on offense. Big time. Definition of a two-way guard, no question. A lot of outside the perimeter dribbling. Jefferson reads the pass. St. Mary's with numbers. Jefferson's met by Wood. Dukas with a hand in his face. Off back iron, St. Mary's have been dominating the offensive class. Logan Johnson is feeling it. 16 and a half. Logan Johnson filling it up on the road. Thirty-seven, thirty-four. St. Mary's has reclaimed the lead. Coming up on AT&T, 5G at the half. Brent Stover, Chris Walker, John Rothstein, Seth Davis. Get you caught up on all the scores and highlights and all the latest news in college basketball today. Coming up on AT&T, 5G at the half. Logan Johnson is 18 points for St. Mary's to lead the way. You said it, they're leaving him open, making them pay from deep. And Logan Johnson has been up to the tack so far. Hook shot for Shulman out of the stop action. Good set design from Portland to get the, the defense of St. Mary shifted in that pick and roll. So at what point do you adjust if you're the defense if Johnson's confident enough to shoot it and make it? I think once you get to your fourth made three, it's time to make an adjustment. <laughs> Out of bounds, they say it stays here, much to the dismay of the crowd here in Portland. Because you have to play the numbers, to your point, yeah. right? Logan Johnson's less than a 30% three-point shooter. He's got 18 points this afternoon, and he's coming off a 31-point game. Dukas pushes off, offensive foul. So on Alex Dukas, the Duca took the charge. St. Mary's is calling for the flop. He's going to come away from the ball. Actually, again, that was Bowen, not Dukas, who pushed yeah. off there. So with Bowen, that is his third. And that action close to the basket there. It was Bowen who was the one who carved out that space. And the officials go to the monitors. They want to take a look at it. That's an important foul if it go, uh, goes on Kyle Bowen. He is their... You know, it's really Logan Johnson and Kyle Bowen as the best defenders for St. Mary's. Talk with Coach Randy Bennett. He says that those are our two guys. Because you know about Logan Johnson. He leads the West Coast Conference in steals, second most in Gales history. And they're going to possibly check for a flop here. To me, to me, I don't even want, I don't want a flop, and I don't want an offensive foul either. That's play on to me. You can see Kyle Bowen immediately going to the flop. That was Nadu Naduka just trying to make a play defensively, and that's that's what you have to do against a team like St. Mary's. I'm a, a a call has to be made here, but if we're just looking at it live, if I want if, if I had my druthers, you play on there. Regular play on for you. But again, that would be a big call if it stands on Bowen. He's put in the work. This is his 116th game played. This is the fifth most amongst active West Coast Conference players. That defense, along with Johnson, as we take one more look. So you say that shouldn't be a foul if you were calling it on Bowen. Well, well that angle? was the angle that shows me that Naduka could be called for an offensive foul, the way he hooks and grabbed Kyle Bowen on the way down. That's why I think it's taken a long time right now to review this. 
I mean, that was a great shot by our camera crew. We got the visual signal from Bill Vinovich. And the explanation now from Deldre Carr, who comes over and talks to Mike O'Donnell. They're, they're, they're keeping it an offensive foul because the, the ball needed to, uh, the whistle need to be blown before the shot was actually taken. Gotcha. So it stands there is that offensive foul, third on Bowen. Meadows stops, pivots, turns, fades, in and out. After hitting the rim a few times, loose ball foul down low will walk the floor. Paducah, mm -hmm. first foul. It's the team seventh. So the one and one upcoming for St. Mary's. It's been a much different script from the early January meeting. St. Mary's grabbed the early lead, didn't look back, won it by 42. This is a more healthier Portland team. Tyler Robinson did play in that game. However, he was really struggling with a lower leg injury, was not himself at all. They did not have Moses Wood as well. Johnson, 20 points in the half. He's made all eight free throws. Coming off of the game in which he had a career high 31. Grosito accelerates all the way to the rim off glass. He's been really good this afternoon. He's been going at Logan Johnson. He's been going at Aiden Mahaney, unafraid. He hasn't missed. Five for five. St. Mary's holds for one. Aiden Mahaney delivers Johnson. Crosses, bodies, floats it long. Aduka rips the rebound. Tries from full court length. Wouldn't have counted anyway. That does it for the first half. Michael Donald, this was a fun half. Back and forth. Portland up for the task against the 15th Frank Dale. We saw some good offense, some good defense. This is typical in West Coast Conference play. Buckle up, Chris. It's going to be a good one. End of the first half. St. Mary's, one point lead, 39 38. Coming up, it's ATT 5G at the half. After these messages.
College basketball on C.
gorgeous day in Portland and a fun game inside the Child Center. St. Mary's 39, Portland 38. You get ready to start the second half. Welcome courtside alongside former UCF standout Mike O'Donnell. Chris Lewis here with you. So how about Portland? This is a team that early in the season proved that they can hang with North Carolina, Michigan State. They beat Villanova, and they're showing that form here against St. Mary's. Today. They're finally healthy, and yeah. it's their offense that is really the great thing for the Portland Pirates. Uh, right. Pilots. Well, Logan Johnson has been the anchor for St. Mary's, and in this game, it's been more of the same. Big 20-point half. Eight of eight from the free throw line. He was magnificent in attacking the rim, drawing fouls. He also hit two threes. He's not known as a three-point shooter, but Logan Johnson coming off a 31-point game in a loss versus Loyola Marymount has been locked in on the offensive end. And then for Portland, Christian Scholin, when you're worried about Moses Wood, he only had six points, and you're worried about Tyler Robinson, he only had six points in the first half. It was Scholin who really stepped up for Portland, 12 points in the first half, multiple threes, and an emphatic dunk. He was the third most important guy for the Pilots in the first half. All right, Mike, what stands out as we look at the first half stats? Well, St. Mary's is doing a great job on the board. 11 of those 20 rebounds are on the offensive end, but they have to do a better job of protecting the paint. Portland has 20 points in the paints. If we can see that, you know that the St. Mary's coaching staff sees that. You can believe the second half adjustment is on its way. All right, should be a fun one. Portland, the home team. Competitive with the 15th ranked Gales. Yeah, right out of the stop action to begin the second half. A foul down low on the block. Moses Wood, the first foul for Portland of half number two, comes just nine seconds in. Don't be surprised if you don't see Aiden Mahaney get more action on the offensive end and right on cue off the baseline out of bounds. An easy look, just five points for Mahaney, the freshman sensation. He's won the West Coast Conference Freshman of the Week Award six straight weeks. Nine total. Moses Wood off the screen. Aduka rolls. Great hands by Saxon to tip it away. They've been daring Johnson to shoot it throughout the game, playing off of him. Johnson's taking advantage of the space. That time a kick ball. Logan Johnson won't shoot an early three unless he's unbelievably wide open. He'll shoot his threes, catch and shoot in rhythm later in the shot clock after they've run their offense. Saxon off the rim, gets it back. And St. Mary's, a patient team, resets. Mahaney, healthy three. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm saying uh-oh, and if I feel it's uh-oh, that's why Portland's getting a timeout. That is the last guy in the West Coast Conference that you want to get hot. Aiden Mahaney. We talked about his ability to catch and shoot from three. Top 15 in the country in catch and shoot, shooting efficiency. Look out.
Coming up next, our college basketball marathon continues. A Mountain West doubleheader. Wyoming clashes with Boise State in Boise, followed by the Aggies taking on the Spartans at 10 Eastern. Catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. And the Mountain West, it's been one of the standout conferences in college basketball this year. It's been all year around fit in the net. New Mexico, you see there Jerry Palm seed. 10 by it. That was before their loss last night against Air Force on the road. Yeah, it looks like at a minimum the Mountain West is going to get four teams in the NCAA Lake tournament, potential with a fifth, depending on what Utah State does. They got got a couple chances. They still have to play Nevada and Boise to end out the regular season. Yeah, every Mountain West matchup at this point seems like a key game. Burrasito out of the timeout for Portland, dragged the pivot foot. It's a travel. Really good defense by Aiden Mahaney. Sliding his feet. Watch him close out. Watch the recovery, though. Way quicker than people give him credit for. All right, on this end, it's all about Aiden Mahaney. Hit a big three, last possession, well behind the line. A rare turnover for a team that usually values the ball. Johnson, he points to the chest saying, hey, that's my bad. That's just their fifth turnover, and it's one of the reasons why they play at a slower tempo. They're going to take their time. They're not going to make mistakes. One of the things that Coach Randy Bennett told us about Johnson, as Robertson takes it to the rim, St. Mary's gets the board. Randy Bennett learned from Johnson about how a coach showing confidence in a player matters. And you know, this is the fourth year for Logan Johnson here at St. Mary's after a year at Cincinnati. And it's the more and more trust that Randy Bennett has put into Logan, the better Logan has produced. Logan Johnson has spoke at multiple banquets at St. Mary's and almost in tears on how much he appreciates the coaching staff believing in him throughout his career and over the course of time at St. Mary's. It was re really enjoyable to listen to head coach Randy Bennett tell that story. You can feel the appreciation, but also Coach Bennett was just so complimentary of Logan's leadership. Dukas delivers again. All right down the well, 23 second chance points for St. Mary's to make up their 47. They've scored the game's last eight. A whistle around mid-court. St. Mary's going to take their time. That has to be a better closeout if you're Portland. Alex Dukas, top three in the West Coast Conference in three-point shooting. And like that was assisted by Mahaney, so the takeover continues, not just him scoring, but him assisting, and that time getting the board. That's one of the reasons why his efficiency is off the charts on the offensive end. He's the 10th most efficient offensive rating freshman for Bart Torvik. The Duca, the dirty work player for Portland, getting his hands in there, forcing the tie up, and the arrow gives the ball to Portland. Zerk Johnson, is they're going to try to double anything around the block or the paint area. Portland is going to try to double, and so far they've done, I would say, an adequate job of doubling without fouling. It's hard to do, though, especially how physical and aggressive St. Mary's attacks are in. The Portland team that's alternated wins and losses over the last four. They have lost 11 straight to St. Mary's. Wood. Flips, clock down to 10. Robertson, the Burley guard. The Duca, not much of a scorer back in that time. Dukas on the run with the rebound. As a size mismatch, Gorosito just 150 pounds listed. I don't see many players listed at 150. He's a little generous. Logan Johnson makes it rain. That's his third three. He's been just dialed in this week. Unbelievably dialed in. And midcourt. Blocking foul. Aiden Mahaney coming off the ball screen. They're giving Logan Johnson that three-point look. But he has been so good, you might need to start adjusting your scatter report. 
considering how smooth he is shooting the ball this afternoon. I mean, what an eruption at a halftime. 11 straight for St. Mary's. Portland still looking for their first points of the second half. Most what needs to get going for Portland. That one might have been tipped. Joshua Jefferson off the bench, way short on the three. Offensive rebound against St. Mary. Saxon, third chance off the rim. And finally, Portland brings it in. Mark Meadows on the run. Meadows bangs it to the defender. Offensive foul. That's why he's one of the best freshmen in the country. You know about the threes. You know about the dimes. How about a little toughness? for Maiden Mahaney, a proper bowler. St. Mary's has scored all 11 points since halftime. CBS Sports celebrates black history, its limitless culture, undeniable impact. Happy Black History Month. And speaking of black history, Leroy Doss, the first African-American to play at St. Mary's College back in 1956. Up lead the Gales to the Elite Eight in 59. First player to be named West Coast Conference Player of the Year for St. Mary's. And that success continued after his playing days. Became a successful businessman and was one of the first African American to be on the St. Mary's Alumni Board of Directors, Board of Regents, its Board of Trustees. Mike, one of the coolest things about doing games here with CBS Sports in the month of February is learning some of the unique nuggets of black history within the different schools that we cover things I did not know had no idea coming in it really is a cool thing to learn we are storytellers and we're thankful that we get to do this job and sports can be one of the more unique and beautiful avenues to tell stories like that that are not just important but just can be so impactful for future generations no question now, St. Mary's has dominated this second half. Aiden Mahaney has had his balls all over it. Whips it to Dukas and connects on another three. Alex Dukas, 15 in this game. And St. Mary's, their largest lead at 15. It's been a complete flip in this second half. And reach in on Joshua Jefferson. This was a horn set coming out of the timeout break, and you get Dukas popping to the left wing. He's got such a fluid energy transfer on his shot. 
So horn set, what does that mean? Horn set when you got two post players that are on each corner of the free throw line. It's pretty easy and pretty ob uh, obvious to see, even if you're a casual fan, you can do so many things from that action. Well, the Gales defense up to a couple of notches since halftime. Meadows before the fadeaway. An offensive foul. That was the second offensive foul drawn by Aiden Mahaney. Guarding Meadows, there's a little bit of an extension with the right arm there. Mahaney sells it well. They may get Bucinich. Actually, yeah, I'm sorry on that replay. Yep. Two offensive fouls on that play, <laughs> technically. A different type of two for one. Zuzness has the hot hand. St. Mary's just ran the exact same horn set. Portland covered it well that time. Dukas, why not? Shorts. Jefferson chases the board. He had his heel out of bounds. That's a call travel. That's interesting. We'll see the officials come together and see if they'll correct the call. And they'll say, hey, wait a minute, it stays with St. Mary's. Because that ball was rocketed back at Jefferson. It was not a travel. Portland has to do a better job of crashing the glass and boxing out. You can be undersized and undermanned in the post, but you still have to box out. St. Mary's has 23 second chance points. It wasn't second chance. <laughs> Saxon delivers the hammer. St. Mary's has blown this open. Portland scoreless nearly six minutes into the second half. Vucinic lost the footing. Traveling violation. The St. Mary's defense can be suffocated. And on the offensive end, a fantastic dime by Logan Johnson. We've talked a lot about Dukas' performance on the offensive end, his three-point shooting. But he's done a really, really good job on Moses Wood, who's averaging over 15 points a game. Wood currently just six points this afternoon. Everything working on this end. Mahaney off the front rim. Veracito floats. Bucinic off glass. And finally, the crowd can get into it. It took six and a half minutes into the second half for Portland to score. Crafty pass by Goracito. Post entry, Saxon travel. Even though they got a good look on that, I thought Portland defended that zoom action pretty well from St. Mary's. Zoom action is dribble handoff in the ball screen, and they were trying to get they were trying to get Wessels in the low post, the big seven foot one freshman. They got it. So zoom action, dribble handoff into a ball screen. A lot of zoom action around March of 2020. COVID made it so we had a lot of zoom action everywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not running zoom on the, the Sunday afternoon pickup games, the one? Oh, well, no, not quite. Gales looking to build a new winning streak. They lost their 12-game streak in overtime against Loyola Marymount. But LMU becoming the first West Coast Conference team to beat BYU, Gonzaga, and St. Mary's in the same season. Active hands by Solon. Portland had a crazy two overtime loss to Pepperdine. Goracito floating three. Way off balance. Rebound gobbled up by Harry Wessels for St. Mary's. Mahaney took over that game against Gonzaga. He had 18 in that game. Scored or assisted on 19 of 21 down the stretch. Jefferson left open from the corner. Pure. Like Josh Jefferson's game a lot. When he becomes more consistent from three, he's such a dynamic inside out player. Just a freshman for the Gales. 
The Nevada Preps Boys Player of the Year on the way to the rim. Robertson is fouled. It's 19-2 in the second half in favor of St. Mary's. It's all St. Mary's right now. The offense is clicking. Draw an additional defender, kick out to a teammate. That's been St. Mary's offense so far. St. Mary's in control in the second half, leading 58-40 over Portland. All right, so we revisit our AT&T 5G fast analysis. This second half controlled all the way by St. Mary's multiple contributors. Yeah, Aiden Mahaney got, came out of the gate, had five quick points, including that three, and then Dukas continues his hot shooting afternoon. That was his fifth three. Logan Johnson gets involved in the action. But the passing for St. Mary's has been on point. 16 assists on 19 made field goals. The offense for the Gales clicking. Look right there. You mentioned the offense clicking, but this is a team that's bread and butter is that other end of the floor, the defensive end. And we've seen them tighten the screws since halftime. It's no secret. You're going to play against St. Mary's. They're going to make adjustments defensively, and they're just going to be really physical and gritty all game long. They're fifth in the country per Ken Palm in adjusted defensive efficiency. They're fifth in the nation in scoring defense. It's suffocating. That's the best word I can describe the St. Mary's half-court defense. Absolutely suffocating. And it's a yearly thing. They've been inside the top 15 defensive efficiency the last three seasons. And they do a great job of taking away the opposing team's best player. Against Oral Roberts, they have an unbelievable score, top five in the country, Max Acemas. They held him to 15, uh, excuse me, 14 points. He averages 22 a game against Aaron Estrada and Hofstra, who's having a great season. Estrada averages 21. They held him to 16. And then New Mexico, Jamal Mashburn, averaging almost 20 points a game. They held him to 12. They take away your best player. They take away your preferred action and they're just unbelievably consistent with it. It's led to this team being in the postseason year after year, 15 straight postseasons, eight of them being the NCAA tournament, including last season. Well on their way for going back to the big dance. And a net. That's sparkling inside the top ten. It's an offensive foul. I believe they'll get Harry Wessels here. Indeed. And if you're Portland, there's plenty of time. But you've got to get back to what you did in the first half. The ball needs to move. The ball is sticking too much in the half court for the pilots. You've got to run your action. You need screening action, flares, down screens, stagger screens. You've got to throw the whole kitchen, kitchen sink at St. Mary's, or they're just going to lock you up. Just saw Shante Leggins, the second-year head coach. He's really turned around Portland's offense in a fast order. This was amongst the lowest-scoring teams annually in the West Coast Conference before he took over. 
Robertson bumps and will head to the line. Jefferson, his fourth foul. I mentioned that smothering defense. Robertson was held to the season low four points against St. Mary's in the first game. Had six turnovers. Had a good stretch in the first half of this game. Backs down the first. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you some fierce bull action. Toughest sport on dirt heads to Tulsa for the Express Ranches Classic. Don't miss BBR Unleash the Beast on a 24-hour home of CBS Sports. St. Mary's has unleashed their beastly defense in the second half of this one. Robertson getting a couple from the free throw line. Just six second half points for Portland. 21 for St. Mary's. All that action underneath the basket, that movement base draws the foul. That's Alex Dukas, just moving without the basketball, getting into the defender. That's how you get open. You actually, you think you want space, but you, the closer you are to a defender, the more you can bump off them. And I think Alex Dukas does that exceptionally well. He's, he's six foot seven, running the baseline, coming off screens. How do you emulate that in a scouting report? It's almost impossible. Gets off as many threes as anybody in the conference. Sacks it, all the hands around him. A lot of body, too. It's contact with the arm. And a foul on Portland. Third on Robertson. It's good action, baseline out of bounds, and that was just a lot of hands right there. Set up the inbounds for Mahaney to attempt to tip. But to get it over the front of the rim. This is where Robertson's really good. In the post up. Didn't work there. Big collision. Finally a whistle. It was Nduka who hit the deck. And he's called for the foul. Naduka sells this really well off the DHO. Logan Johnson tries to fight over it. Dribble handoffs a lot of times act as almost moving pick and roll type screens. If you can sell it right and position yourself right, Logan Johnson tried to fight over it. And call for the foul. So yeah, correction there. It is on Logan Johnson, not Naduka, like initially. He was the one upset that the foul was on him. Was not. Meadows races to the rim. Richard Paul getting downhill. Good job by Meadows of turning the corner, getting downhill, and finding a rare crease in a St. Mary's defense. Yeah, Portland's going to make a run to get back in it. Has to start getting stops on this end. Johnson misses a three. Bowen turns it down. Johnson again, that low crossover dribble right at the free throw line. We've seen that a bit. Mahaney calls for the screen. Retreat fade oh, away. No. Jay Butter. Oh, oh, man. That may look easy. It's not. A righty going left. Hezzy step back. Meadows, no. They'll stay. No, check it. It'll go to St. Mary's. Initial point was to Portland, and then he corrected. This is what I mean by Aiden Mahaney as a proper baller. He accepts the switching of the screen, little step back, mid-range. That is so tough. He went to the same high school as Randy Bennett's son, Cade Bennett, who's on the roster for St. Mary's. And one of the things that Randy Bennett told us, the wide shot selection that Mahaney has is such a weapon for this team. That motion bogs down. They know he can just give him the ball, high ball screen. He'll create something out of it. Johnson with the contact, out the hoop with the harm. What a smart play by Logan Johnson. Everybody for Portland was worried about Aiden Mahaney running baseline, and Johnson finds the crease because of how aggressive the defense is trying to close out on Mahaney. 
27 points for Logan Johnson. And by the way, five rebounds, six assists. Not too bad. Filling it up. He's been the leading scorer for St. Mary's in road games this year. And that theme continues. And Wood does too much on it. And like you've talked about it, Wood has struggled here tonight. And you could tell he's not comfortable against this St. Mary's defense. And it's not necessarily just Moses Wood. Tyler Robertson is struggling, but that's what everybody does. It, it happens against the St. Mary's defense. They take away your best player, your best scoring a threat, and they take away the action that you like to run. And by the way, Logan Johnson again. Logan Johnson taking over Portland in a timeout. 29 points. That's 60 over the last two games. It's Logan Johnson's show, and we're all just really happy we get to see it. A little too short. St. Mary's a 20. This was a one-point game at halftime with St. Mary's in front. Since then, 27 to 8 St. Mary's, and that starts on defense. The halftime adjustment was physicality. We have to start blowing up these screens and these dribble handoffs, and that's exactly what St. Mary's did in the second half. Their defense has been suffocating, stifling, any adjective you want to use to essentially mean it's been exhausting to try to score against this wall of a defense from St. Mary's. Randy Bennett's teams year after year, top 15 in the country in defensive efficiency. You can see the numbers there. NCAA top five in points allowed. And when you talk about teams that can not just win games or win a game in the NCAA tournament, you want to talk about teams that advance to the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight. Those teams usually have great balance. They're top five in adjusted defensive efficiency for Ken Palm, but they also have a top 50 offense as well. So St. Mary's quietly has some really terrific balance. Balance is a word you mentioned. Experience, continuity, yep. they have that as well. In a topsy-turvy year in college basketball, we've talked a lot about teams going in and out of the rankings in the top 25. St. Mary's team, and coming off of a loss, our first in conference play to Loyola Marymount. There's a lot of things that are going their way as evidence that they can make a run. Logan Johnson, 31 points in back-to-back -back games, tying a career high. He's incredible. He is so good, so crafty, so fast, coming off dribble handoffs, ball screens. Saxon says no. Defense, defense, defense. And speaking of balance, St. Mary's has also hit their last four shots. Weak side block by the big fella, Mitchell Saxon. Number one in the West Coast Conference in blocks. Portland is one of their last 
last eight from the field. Joey St. Pierre gets the roar from the crowd. Didn't see him in the first half, the senior center. Gonzaga came in one game up, I mean, St. Mary's came in one game up on Gonzaga with five games left on the WCC slate. Dukas flicks the wrist. Count it for Alex Dukas. That's his 6-3 for Dukas. His energy transfer is so fluid. One of the best in the country. Ties for the most made threes he's had in the game this year. And another turnover for Portland. Logan Johnson's so smart, could have pushed the action. He's playing unbelievable. Right, he's got 31 points. He could have pushed it, tried to get more, but he pulls the pulls it back out, runs the offense. That's why he's a captain. That's why he's a leader. Let's see what the leader does here. Sets up a teammate. Dukas attacks the closeout. Bang, no call. That's a lot of contact. <laughs> Guarantee you, I'm calling that in a pickup game. 100%. Call your own fouls. Would have called that one. Alden Applewhite, swish, long two. Applewhite scored 13 points. He had the team high in the meeting in early January. That St. Mary's won by 42. Picturesque ball movement for the Gales. Two hands on the back of Saxon, which will draw the foul. Joey St. Pierre is first. You think about the St. Mary's team. It, you and I were talking at halftime like this. We, we got a game. If Portland came to play. They came out swinging against St. Mary's. But the Gales are so good at adjusting not just in TV timeouts, but after halftime. They made the adjustment defensively. Offensively, they ran two plays quickly for Aiden Mahaney to get him going. So then the defense of Portland says, oh no, we did a great job in the first half. We have to overcompensate and go on Mahaney, but that leaves Dukas more open. Logan Johnson got going. I mean, this has been a really impressive second half adjustment by the Gales. And we saw that you know, same kind of thing against Gonzaga and how they adjusted in the second half of that game. It was the better team down the stretch after Gonzaga built that early lead. That rematch in the West Coast Conference finale. Oh man. Man, oh man. Johnson feels like he has the game on his strength. Lefty attacks in and out. Nearly had a new career high, but of course gets it back. New season high in offensive rebounds, and Logan Johnson with an exclamation points. 34 points for Logan Johnson. You give him space, and he's showing what he can do with it. We talk about how good his defense is. But when he's making threes, Logan Johnson is virtually unstoppable.
has taken over 74 52. As we take a closer look at a play we love, brought to you by Marco's Pizza, no surprise, Logan Johnson involved. You hate guarding guards that can change their speed. Quick little hezzy, swivel of the hip, tough finish, and one for Logan Johnson. 34 points, 11 of 18 from the field. He's hit four threes and eight of nine from the free throw line. By the way, he's got six assists as well. He's gonna be in the running. Yeah, I know Drew Timmy's been unbelievable. Yeah. He has. Aiden Mahaney, his teammate, will, he's gonna win freshman of the year in the West Coast Conference, but he is having a first team all West Coast Conference type season. And he'll be in the running for player of the year. I mean, he's just been one of the most pesky guard defenders for St. Mary's for years. And you know, that step offensively, he's averaging 13 a game, but the last two, 31 in the overtime loss against Loyola Marymount. And then in this one, 34. And he leads St. Mary's in steals as well. He is their best defender. A lot of the starters remain on for St. Mary's. Marshall Lotus is the only reserve. He takes the corner three, halfway down. I think has been impressive too for Aiden Mahaney is he doesn't try to get his. He doesn't try to force his action. He never felt left out. Jordan St. Pierre, hard work on the interior. And to that point, that unselfishness, it really does feel like a part of the culture here. No question. I think top to bottom. Who's ever is hot, they go to that. And also, it really helps to have, we talk about Aiden Mahaney and Logan Johnson, but it really helps to have a player like Dukas to stretch the floor, to give more driving angles to those guards. Foul as Saxon will head to the line. Reminds me of something that Randy Bennett did say in our conversation with him yesterday. He says the biggest thing in recruiting is talking, just learning who these guys are, learning who their parents are, how they've been raised within the game of basketball, because that gives you the feeling of whether they fit with the culture here at St. Mary's and the type of player that can be a part of this program that wins 20 plus games every year. Oh, I think the other non-negotiables, you have to be tough. Yeah. You have to be tough to play at St. Mary's. These players love playing for him. Couple of free throws go for Saxon who exits. Harry Wessels comes in. Kyle Bowen also exits for the Gales. And a win will keep them a game in front of Gonzaga. Meadows, yes. St. Mary's hasn't won an outright West Coast Conference title since the 2011-2012 season. They take care of business the rest of the way and then have that last meeting against Gonzaga have a chance to do it. A lot of basketball to be played before. Marcelonis might have gotten away with a walk, but gets his first two points of the night. Another guy with exceptional speed. It goes to show you, again, the unselfishness. Marshall Otis, sophomore out of Lithuania. He started 13 games last season for St. Mary's, and that was the most for a St. Mary's freshman since 2016. He's now back in a reserve role, but he's still fitting right in. This may sound very obvious um, when we say, when I, when I talk about guys like Marshall Otis, who they just know when to attack. Yeah. And almost everybody on the court for St. Mary's knows when to attack and how to attack a gap for a driving lane. And that is a skill. And, and it can be coached, but a lot of times it's more just inherent in a player to understand just how to play angles and lanes appropriately. Johnson, you saw him just exit. Career high 34 points. Career high eight free throws made. Tied his career high with four threes. Not the way from Marshall Otis. Portland on the run with Appleboy. Applewhite, do it yourself to the rim. It draws the foul. 
Move Barrett's first foul. But it's been Logan Johnson's game. And you mentioned it right away within the game's first couple of minutes. Hey, they're not guarding Johnson close. He's going to have a lot of space in this game. And to do that, that's basically the target for the other team's defense. Extremely impressive. We revisit the keys. And St. Mary's does a really nice job of guarding Portland's three-point attack. Only 5 of 16 from the field. They got 24 points in the paint. Great job for the Gales offensively, obviously. Portland was unable to run. They couldn't manufacture stops. They couldn't get steals. They couldn't get runouts. Not getting out in the fast break is... It's tough. Remember, at halftime, this was just a one-point game. St. Mary's, the huge run to begin the half. Travel on Chris Howell, who's in for St. Mary's. Redshirt freshman from San Diego. St. Mary's, as for Asito, never shy. That's the three. At San Diego, next time out for St. Mary's. Pacific, BYU, Gonzaga. Four teams remaining on their West Coast Conference schedule. After a slow first half, complete takeover in half two. Jefferson, oh yeah. Even get a little clap from head coach Randy Bennett. He gave the three points down for the freshman. That's a good sign. It's all been well for St. Mary's since halftime. Apple White, three point play on the mid range J. Augustus Marshallonis. Go off for the foul. Marshallonis could not believe it. That was two hands to the head. So Alden Applewhite. Out of Memphis. Spent a year, played a couple of games at Mississippi State before marching along to Portland. Now for the Pilots, they'll drop to five and eight. The goal for them is that top six in the West Coast Conference standings. That team would get the bye in the first round of the West Coast Conference tournament. Top six get the bye. And Logan Johnson isn't going to score 30 every single game. But that means Aiden Mahaney can get going. Saxon only had four points tonight. He averages 12. Dukas was really good for the three-point line. This, this offense has a chance. We know about the defense, but this offense for St. Mary's has a chance to take them deep into the NCAA tournament. Dominant second half for St. Mary's. They get the big win over Portland, 81-64. A bounce back for the Gales in their 12th straight win against Portland. Take a look at the West Coast Conference standings up to date. St. Mary's gets that 11th win. Remain in front of Gonzaga. Those two will go head to head. The last game of the West Coast Conference regular season. Meanwhile, Portland drops to five and eight, chasing Pacific. Part of that top six spots. St. Mary's gets the road win. We'll be back from Portland.